Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our 12 p.m. prayer session. It is a Monday and it's a time that I'm looking forward to because it's a the study of the sanctuary. And we want to thank our guest speaker, Sister Knox, who is willing to allow God to use her as we go through the review of the sanctuary. Um, last week we reviewed um, the sanctuary um, furniture and this week as you can see from the slide we're talking about Christ our high priest at this time we are going to pray and invite God's presence most gracious father in heaven the lover of our soul and the sustainer of our lives we give you praise and thanks for another day given to us we thank you, Lord, that we can meet in this fashion to pray and to hear a word from God. Forgive us, dear Lord, where we have strived in our own strength, where we believe that, dear Lord, that we can do all things. But we know, dear Father, it's not, it is without you, we are nothing. We are indeed like a ship without a sail, without an anchor. So we ask, dear Father, for Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed on Calvary, to cleanse us. Cleanse us by the blood, cleanse us by the word, and forgive us of all of our sins and transgressions. We come before you, dear Lord, waiting to hear a word from you. And you promise, dear Father, to give us meat in due season. Bless Sister Knox. Use her in a, in your divine way, dear Father, to bring your people to a better understanding of who our high priest is and his role in heaven. And as the children of God waiting for his return, how we should conduct ourselves during this period of time. We, pr we pray for a blessing on the word spoken. We pray for a blessing on this uh, recording for those who hear and receive this message, may they be like children of Ezekiel, knowing what to do in the season that they are living in. We ask, dear Father, for your blessings now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Over to you, Sister Knox. Thank you, Sister Sharon. Um, good afternoon, brothers, sisters, who are online now as we continue with our review of um, uh, the sanctuary and its services, the types and the anti-types in relation to Christ. Um, today we are looking at um, uh, Christ, our high priest. Christ, our high priest just to see um, the sanctuary and, um, and its services and the relevance, their relevance to Christ's ministration for us as, as our high priest. I'm trying to move this away. Right, Christ our High Priest. The Savior has many titles, for he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than the angelic host. Of these titles, the more dear to humanity is the Lamb of God, the High Priest. By virtue of these offices, he can lift up sin down trodden um humanity where they can share in his glorious kingdom of grace even while still in this sin cursed world in the typical services the one convicted as sinner would bring a lamb for sin offering for the high priest the priest could not officiate any services without this offering this was a way to salvation simplified for kindergartens to comprehend. When we realize that we have sinned, we remember our lamb. 
Um, we remember our lamb, confess our sins, and in his name, I mean, things keep freezing. I don't know what I said. Okay. When we realize that we have sinned, we remember our lamb, confess our sins, and in his name, they are forgiven. We then of, um, he then officiates for us before the Father, pleading the merits of his blood and covers our life stained um, uh, with sin with the robe of his righteousness. And we stand before the Father spotless and beloved. How then can we fail to love him who offered his life for us? And he says, my father loves me because I lay my life. Even the infinite love of the father for his son was increased because of that act. In type, in, in type the blood of the sin offering was shed in the outer court. And then the priest entered the sanctuary with the blood to present before God. Jesus gave his life for sin sacrifice here on earth. And as he entered heavenly sanctuary, as high priest, he is called the forerunner. That name is not applied to him until he enters within the veil of the heavenly sanctuary. In all the, mona uh, the, monarchy, uh, the, mona the monarchical forms of government, the forerunner is gorgeously dressed, waving uh, uh, plums and riding before, the, uh, before and announcing the approach of the royal carriage. While he is always hailed with joy, however, the eyes are on the road for whence he came to get the first glimpse of the royal personage of whom he is the forerunner. Of all the roles our master has to fulfill, this one is one of the grandest. When he entered heaven and a, a mighty conqueror over death and the grave, before the entire heavenly host and representatives from other worlds, he entered a forerunner for us. He presented a wave chief, those brought forth from the dead at the time of his resurrection, as a symbol of the race he had come to redeem, thus directing the attention of the wonderful assemblage down the road from whence he came for royalty. Yes, for royalty purchased to, uh, to be so by his pre precious blood. It is only a, a company of poor, frail mortals stumbling along and often falling by the way. But when they reach the heavenly pearly gates, they will enter as heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. It meant much for us that Christ entered the heavenly veil as our forerunner. For all heaven is watching the church of God on earth. When tempted by the enemy to doubt God's love and care for you, remember that you are so special to God that he who touches you touches the apple of God's eye. Heaven and earth are closely united since Christ entered the veil as our forerunner. The attention of angels now is upon those striving to follow. Um, Christ's footsteps. Why then should we falter on that way? So prepared for us when all help and watchfulness of heavenly beings is on us. But let us never forget it is a blood-stained pathway by him who never avenged himself in any way when he was tried, but committed to him who judges. We cannot follow him in our strength, and for this reason, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful high priest in godly things to make reconciliation for sinners. For he 
himself was tempted just like we are in all manners, yet without sin. You see that in Hebrews uh, chapter 2, verse 17. Therefore, the holy brethren consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. In the earthly sanctuary, not only the high priest, but also the common priest became the, uh, uh, because, sorry, not only the high priest, but also the common priest, because the work was too great to be done by one, the work of one year was therefore taken as a type. Of the entire work of our high priest, during the year, the priests took turns uh, to do the work in the sanctuary, except once a year in the Day of Atonement. Only the high priest officiated in the Holy of the Holies. When Christ went to heaven, he entered the first apartment to perform the work ordained by God as an antitype of the earthly services. Progressing to the second veil, uh, the holy of the holies, to finish his antitype work of blotting sins um, of, uh, of the saints, never again to be remembered by the heavenly host, nor by God. When Christ shall stand on the sea of glass with a glittering crown to give to the redeemed host, washed white by his own blood, who walked on the path mapped by his own footsteps, though faltering and tear stained many a times, he will behold the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Um, let us just take a look, just a summary of Christ being our high priest in heaven as a fulfillment of the types. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, he is um, counted as he is, is described as one who, who, who is able to save to the uttermost all that come to God um, through him. In Hebrews 4, verse 15, he is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He was uh, in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. In Hebrews 2, 18, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. In Hebrews 2, um, in, in Hebrews 2, 17, he is a faithful and merciful high priest. In Hebrews 7, 25, he ever lives to make intercession. Now we'll just take a look on the office of the high priest to understand what office did Christ take up as our high priest in heaven and what he does. Office and work of the high priest. In early, in early times, the patriarchs were priests over their own households. And God's original design was that the eldest son should take his father's place as priest of the family. But the plan of God was often thwarted by the sins of the eldest sons. The Lord's words to Cain would indicate that he was uh, debarred of his inherited position on account of sin. If thou doest well, shall thou not have the excellency? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at, your, at thy doorstep. Sin prevented Cain from having the excellence. On account of sin, Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, lost the excellence of dignity and the excellence of power, which was his inherited right. When, when, when but a youth, Joseph cultivated those traits of character that gave him the excellence above his brethren. It is very uh, probably that the coat of many colors given him by his father 
was interpreted by his brethren as indicating his accession to the priesthood. God gave his firstborn for the redemption of the world. And for that reason, in God's plan, the firstborn always inherited special privileges. To him came a double, a double portion. Uh, forgive me, people. Uh, my screen keeps freezing and uh, my document disappearing. I keep having to open it again. Uh, the devil is always um, at work just to disturb. I keep having to go back to reopen it again because of it freezing and subsequently um, disappearing. Just give me a minute. We're praying for you, Sister Knox. Mm. Right. Right, we are looking at um, the office of the high priest. Where was I? God gave his firstborn for the redemption of the world, and for that reason. Uh, in God's plan, the firstborn always inherited special privileges. To him came a double portion of his father's uh, estate, a priesthood, and the firstborn in the descent from Isaac, the honor of being the progenitor of the Messiah. In the first, if the firstborn proved unworthy, his inheritance was given to others, as in the case of Reuben. Where Judah became the progenitor of Christ, Joseph received the double portion and Levi received the priesthood. The firstborn was so often unworthy on account of sin that when the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, he said, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn. Uh, instead, instead of the, all the firstborn of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. It was because of the tribe of Levites uh, stood true to God in time of a crisis that God chose them to serve before him. And when the service of the sanctuary was established, the priesthood was given to Aaron and his sons. And the remainder of the tribe of Levi uh, was to do the work of the sanctuary under the, uh, the direction of the priests. Aaron was appointed to officiate as high priest and his sons as common priests. The eldest son to take the office of high priest on Aaron's death. The consecration to the priest's office was a most imposing ceremony. Aaron was clothed in the garments, in the garments which were made by him under God's direction. Several sacrifices were slain and the blood of the ram of um, consecration was touched to the, uh, to the tip of the right ear. The thumb of the right hand and the, and the great toe of the right foot of both Aaron and his sons, signifying that their ears, hands and feet were consecrated to the service of God. Unleavened bread denoting sincerity and truth, and the right shoulder of the sacrifice of consecration uh, were all put upon Aaron's hands and upon his son's hands. The priests were to 
typify uh, the one of whom Isaiah said, the government shall be upon his shoulder. They were to bear the burdens of the people, the anointing oil and the blood was then sprinkled upon Aaron and his sons, typifying the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit, which alone could fully qualify them to fill uh, the holy office. The priesthood remained unbroken in Aaron's family until the sins of Eli and his sons made it necessary to change. And for a time, Samuel and 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 uh, Ephra, Ephra, he was a, he was an Ephraimite, filled the office of leading priest in Israel. Abiathar was thrust out of the office of the priesthood in fulfillment of the prophecy given to Eli. Um, but Z Zadok, who filled the office of high priest in the time of David and Solomon, was thought by many to be a grandson of Eli. As the Israelites departed from the, from the Lord, the priesthood, he, uh, he came, became corrupt. Until in the time of Christ, it was brought and sold for money. And I think we do know that even um, the high priest who presided during time, the time of Christ was an imposter who had bought it with money to be in that position. God designed that the high priest should more nearly represent Christ than any other priest. The work of every priest was a type of Christ's work. But the common priest performed work only in the court and the first apartment of the sanctuary, while the high priest officiated not only in the court and the first apartment as well as the common priest, but went alone into the holy of the holies. Aaron at times offered burnt offerings on the present altar in the court. It was impossible for one man to perform all the work of the sanctuary that typified the work of Christ. And for that reason, there was company of common priests to assist the high priest. It is always a rule that a, a higher of official can fill the offices below, uh, that is below him. The high priest offered burnt offerings in the court and sin offerings in the first apartment. Paul speaks of the high priest of the high priest offering the sin offerings, where the blood was taken into the sanctuary. In the sin offerings for the priests and the congregation, the blood was taken within uh, the sanctuary. It seems very fitting that the high priest should offer the sin offerings for the common priests and the entire congregation. In most of the sin offerings, the flesh was eaten in the holy place and the blood was not taken into the sanctuary. While the high priest uh, could perform any work in the first apartment that other priests could perform, there was a daily service in the first apartment of the sanctuary that none but the high priest could perform. He alone could burn incense upon the altar, uh, upon the golden altar before the Lord, and uh, trim the light, the light, the lamps on the golden uh, candlesticks. Each morning and evening, twice every day throughout the entire year, the high priest officiated in the first apartment of the sanctuary. The crowning service of the whole year was on the 10th day of the seventh month, when the high priest entered the Holy of the Holies alone to make atonement for the sins of the people. Upon his breast, in the stones of the breastplate, were inscribed the names of the 12 tribes, typifying Christ our high priest as he thinks upon us individually and confesses our names as they come up in review before God.
So now the summarizing of the type um, and antitype of Christ, um, the office of the high priest. In Exodus 28, verse 1 and 2, he was called of God. In Hebrews 3, verse 1 to 3, he was appointed by God. That is Christ. In Exodus 29, verse 21, the priesthood passed from father to son. In Hebrews 7, 23 and 24, Levites were forever the priests. God took them unto himself as his own, as his firstborn in Israel. Um, in Leviticus uh, 16, verse 1 to 20, the high priest made the typical atonement in the end of the year services. In Hebrews 9, uh, verse 14 and 26, Christ atones for sins, for our sins, by the sacrifice of himself. He entered behind the veil through his own blood. Now, that is uh, the presentation on Christ, our high priest, and the office of the of 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 the high priest i'll give back to you sister sharon for a discussion amen. And question amen and amen thank you so much sister Knox. It's, i know that we haven't exhausted this study and and you know as seven day adventists we have a very unique perspective of the sanctuary you know most people believe that christ's work stopped at the cross but we know that just as the um, earthly priest had to work in the the the, the um, outer court and then in the the holy and then the most holy place, Christ is doing the very act because what was on the earth was just a pattern to what is being conducted in heaven. Um, uh, as I said, I'm I'm, I'm excited about this uh, about the study. I love the way that you. You, you actually linked the understanding because you know many people say that Joseph is um, comparable to the actions of Christ and when you discuss the, the 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 robe that his father gave him it now you now understand that he had to stand in the gap for his his family um, and that was why he he went through all the tribulations like Christ went through tribulations and then he sta he stands as an intercessor for his family before the um the Egyptian pharaoh etc etc so it's just a beautiful study to see how Christ's righteousness is just not something that is fairy fairy but it's tangible work and it's because of that is why we have the forgiveness of sins but also there is a call for us to be perfect as our father in heaven is perfect and we can only experience that perfection when we understand christ's work in the sanctuary i don't know if there are any questions or statements that people would like to make on today's study I mean, it's just, as I said, there's so many points um, that was was made there. Go, Sister Dorcas, do you have, want to say something? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much. You have explained it all. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Knox. At least we can understand exactly how uh, Christ works, especially on Joseph's story. We didn't know anything like that on Joseph's story. Now we can understand how God this love is. Thank you so much for explaining that to us. Amen. Thank you so much. More prayer. Did you want to make a comment on what was discussed this morning through the study? No, I'm, I don't think you are all right. <laughs> don't know what... Okay, then. Thank you. Right, at this time, can I ask Sister Dorcas if you can pray for the message? As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because we've got this on recording and I'm going to go back and just go back and ruminate over some of the, the, the points that were, were made. 
But as I said, I love the um, the understanding and the analogy of where you know P Joseph was c comparable to Christ, and of course, you know, we can now understand why the Jewish leaders didn't recognize Christ because they took on the role of um, high priest and priest as if it was a occupation and not a calling by God and and that's what stopped them from being recognizing Christ but also to be humble because remember the work of the high priest was to take on the role of Christ until the true sacrifice came and so we can see why the nation of Israel struggled because the leaders were not actually expounding the word in a clear fashion. And we and this is comparable to our time that if we don't understand the nature of the sanctuary, we will not be ready for the second coming of Christ because we will find that we are still in the outer court with our garments filthy instead of being cleansed. By the blood of the Lamb. I don't know if you have any final words for our sister Knox before we pray. Yeah, just to to add a bit there on the comments concerning the Jewish nation and Christ, Christ being the antitype, and them what they did in the sanctuary as the type. Just like us today, if we look at the Jewish church and their economy, they were a movement. They were a movement in the sense that they, they were supposed to understand their position where they were, that they were moving towards fulfilling something that is real in everything that they did daily in the sanctuary and around the sanctuary. But they became stagnant and ceased to be a movement and became just like us today, like any other denomination where they took their work and everything they did as an occupation and as a symbol for for power and um, which they used to oppress people so sorely when christ came they wanted to be the ones introducing him to the people and they wanted him to be under them that they should tell him this is what we do so you, you are going to to do that that part there and christ did not fall under them because he was well above them. They, if they were uh, uh, waiting and aware of the prophecies, they would have known that it was time for the Messiah to come. And as soon as he appeared, they would have moved with him and moved into that position uh, with God and allowed him to take over and they allow themselves to be under him, to be taught and see the real fulfillment of God's plan to vanquish sin and sinners at the end through what they typified every day in the sanctuary. And in the same manner, as Sister White says in the Adventist church, we are in danger of repeating everything, every error that the Jewish church did. Why? Because likewise, we are a movement. We ought to be moving with Christ through the knowledge of prophecy. The knowledge of prophecy allows us to understand where Christ is now, when did he move there, what is he doing now, and what next is coming. And we should be positioning ourselves in the same way to move together with him. So when he finally appears on earth to take us home, he will find us in the position where we are ready for him. The Jewish church were not ready for him because they stopped moving with God in the plan of salvation and it's the one thing we have got to note about the anti-typical time that we are living in we ought to move with our high priest understand where he is and where how we should position ourselves in the event or in in the situation of where he is now and what he's doing thank you amen amen you know i'm glad you kind of brought that point up you know because as you rightfully say, you know, if we're stagnant, we, we, you know, like David, when David stayed at home, sort of being at war, still being in movement, we, he allowed sins to come into his life. And, and because he believed that he was appointed by God, he, he conducted himself in a very 
um, ungodly way. And it was not until the prophet revealed to him his true condition. And, you know, God has provided us with the word of truth, the spirit of prophecy. And when the spirit of prophecy has directed us and shown us our errors, when the word of God has given us light unto our feet, we should be in a spirit of repentance, both leadership and laity. So we thank God that, you know, he is he he is God because he's compassionate enough and human enough what to know that we will be tempted. But the divinity power that he gives to each of each one of us, which is grace, will give us that spirit to overcome you know our nature so we must constantly fall on the rock jesus christ and allow him to change us so sister Dorcas, if you can pray for the message and then we will go into a season of prayer let us pray our dear heavenly father we have the burden before your throne this afternoon we want to thank you for your word, which we have just heard. We thank you, Lord, for the vessel which we have used. We want to thank you for the Holy Spirit who came to reveal the secrets of heaven to us this afternoon. Lord, we don't have much words to thank you for what we have done. We are so happy that we have heard the truth. For you said, if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Indeed, your word is everything to us. We want to thank you for this knowledge which we have just heard this afternoon. The knowledge of Joseph. Lord, we want to thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning. We thank you for your love to us, Lord. We want to thank you for using our sister in a mighty way to explain these uh, things which were hidden uh, to us. We want to thank you, Lord, for allowing each and every one of us to come and hear your words. We pray that may the Holy Spirit continue to use us in the way which you want us to be used. We pray for those who are going to hear this message. May you also give them spiritual ears and spiritual eyes to see all these things which were hidden if you ask so that we won't know much about the sanctuary. Lord, we want to thank you for the plan of redemption which you have put in place for us to be redeemed. We want to thank you, Lord, for each and every one who is going to be used by you. We thank you for this lesson of Joseph. We were just thinking that he only forgave his brothers. We didn't know about his priesthood. We want to thank you, Lord for revealing this to us today. We thank you for all the other things which you have in store for us. 
as you have said in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, that you know the plans which you have for us, the plans for us to prosper and have an expected end. We want to thank you, Lord, for this time which you have allowed us to come before your throne. We pray that, Lord, may you have mercy upon each and every one of us. Help us to repent. Help us, Lord, to forsake sin and wait for you. Help us to walk according to your will so that when you soon come, we will be found ready for you. We want to thank you for you are still holding the four winds of strife to give us the chance to repent. Help us, Lord, to be the doers of your word. We want to thank you for your love, for your mercies, for your protection. We thank you for everything. We humbly pray all this in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Dorcas. Right, we're going to go into a season of prayer. And I'm just going to bring up the theme so that we are um, guided in what we are going to be praying for. Um, Sister Dorcas, I don't know. Are you able to do the prayer of um, praise and thanksgiving? I am. Okay. And and do you have a testimony for us? Uh, yes, I do have. Do you want to share with us now? Thank you. Uh, I, I just want to share with you to, to now because uh, I thank you so much. It was some days when I was uh, just, uh, I wasn't myself. I was not able to to think of what I, I shared the prayer request with you and you prayed together with me. You promised to continue praying for me and I was praying about it as well. I want to thank God that our God is God. Amen. What we think is not what our God we think. Our plans are not our uh, are not God's plans. So we thank God for answering our prayers. My prayer was solved, and I, I in a way which I cannot explain really. And we thank God everything went on well. The people who were supposed to be baptized, they were baptized. And uh, we really celebrated. We, we, were, we thank God. Nothing disturbed me from uh, going to do God's work. And I thank God for everything. And I thank God for uh, my family. Uh, which he gave me, which is the prayer retreat ministry. Thank you so much for all your help. And uh, my, I also want to thank a sister who helped me to, to sort out the problem. So may God continue to use you, all of you, mightily. Amen. May we continue to stand in the gap for each other. I also Amen. have a prayer request which I have now, which I want to pray. We have a sister uh, in this group. She lost a sister in Christ, and she was really, she was in charge of a life, and she, she is the one who is now having all the burdens because the other sister has passed away and she, 
his sister, if you know family, he, he the family is back home. So we she needs to be repatriated to back home, and they need there's a lot of money to be uh, to to send this sister home. So we need to join hands and create something. Go find me for this uh, sister to raise money to take the body back home in Uganda. So can we do something, please? Let's pray about it and uh, try to do something about it, please. Amen. We'll, we'll definitely put this on prayer retreat. If you can put a message on prayer retreat, you know, we will come together and, and God's will will be done. My fav one of my favorite quotes is from the Sly of Ages, page 330. And this is in response to your testimony. It says, our heavenly father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. And, you know, oftentimes we th we sit up all night thinking of different strategies. And what he's saying, you don't even, you're not even going to think this one up. You, but how I'm going to sort things out for you, you're not even going to have any idea. You can't even conjure it up you say, in your mind. And it says, those who accept the one principle of making the service and honor of God supreme will find perplexities vanish and a plain path before their feet. And so, you know, when we are praying, Amen. especially when we have great difficulty, you know, we must find promises from God's word and from the spirit of prophecy, write them down and pray over them so that, number one, we don't become so overwhelmed by the issue, but most of all, we take God at his word. Right, so um, Sister um, Sister Dorcas, if you can do the thanksgiving, which is going to be 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14. Sister Knox, if you can do the prayer of confession, if you have your own scripture, please use, which is Proverbs 28, verse 13. And I will cover the prayer for the Holy Spirit and missions. And for our um, our silent prayer is that we we should pray that when we know that our Savior, who is our High Priest, is in the sanctuary, that we will move along with Him wherever He goes. We will follow the Lamb. That we will not be stagnant, but we will be the moving people, the movement that God requires us to be. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. Our reading for Thanksgiving is coming from Second Corinthians 2 verse 14. It reads, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we humbly bow down before your throne once more. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We want to thank you, Lord, for your church. We want to thank you for each and every one who is called by your name. Lord, we thank you for your word, which we have just heard. We want to thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. We want to thank you for everything which you have put in place for our sake. 
we thank you for all the examples which we read in the Bible. We want to thank you, Lord, for forgiving all our unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, for preparing a table before our enemies. We want to thank you for all the thousand ways which you have for us to protect us. We want to thank you, Lord, for each and everyone who is called by your name, for our brothers, our sisters. We thank you for our elders, our pastors, our youth, our children. We thank you, Lord, for our communities, our neighbors. Lord, we know that all things work together for good. We thank you for everything which you have done for us and for what you are going to do for us. We want to thank you for this moment which you have allowed us to come before your throne. Thank you for the vessel which you have used to share this message. May you continue to bless the nightly and the family. We thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne, morning, noon, and evening. Lord, may you continue to help us to continue to draw closer to you. We thank you for allowing us to choose to have the character like you or to have the character of the evil one. Lord, help us to continue to draw closer to you and may you change us to your character. We thank you, Lord, for all your promises which you have promised us. We want to thank you for fulfilling everything which we have said. We want to thank you for your love, for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the Holy Spirit. For without them, you won't be here today and we will be nothing. We want to thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I read from the Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, is in heaven. We just want to thank you for the plan of salvation. For giving Christ, our Savior, our High Priest, our Advocate, who is now yet still behind the veil, interceding for us, that our sins may be blotted, from before the face of God, never to be remembered again. We thank you, Father, for such a gesture that he gave himself, gave his only blood, and God gave him as his only begotten son. For a fallen world, for them that are guilty, and yet he was innocent. Help us now, O Father, daily to be renewed in, in the truth in the present truth that we may be a movement that progresses together with him unto the accomplishment of the plan of salvation and the ending of sin. Help us where we have uh, lost sight of Christ and have become stagnant. 
instead of moving together with him, we are making our own devices and our own ways. And hence we have become no different from any other denomination out there. And yet you have called us for a special purpose. Help us to realize and remember the calling with which you have called us, that we may make ourselves available to be used by you for such a time as this, to proclaim the present truth that is before us, concerning where Christ is and who he is and what he's about to do. Where we have failed, forgive us, Father, on individual level and as families, as congregations, and ultimately as a body of Christ, where we have put aside the whole message that you have given us for this time, simply because we have lost sight of our Savior. We have lost sight of our High Priest, and we are groping in darkness. Thank you, Father. Be with us now in all the prayers that we bring in this platform. We want to thank you and also for the testimonies that are given, which serve as an encouragement that you do hear us, and you are with us as we come before you presenting ourselves. May your will be done and may you bring us to that expected ending as a, a body of Christ and also on individual level for the glory of Christ and his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus. We pray to our Father that as we pray in his name that our hearts and minds and thoughts will be attuned with heaven. We ask, O oh God, that you will fill each of our lives, but most of all your church who are called by your name with your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you promise to give good gifts to your children. And your word says to us that if we ask, we shall receive. And so, Lord, we believe that your word has power and that in First John verse five verse first John five verse eight it says they are free that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water, the blood, and these three agree in one. And so, dear Father, we come through Jesus Christ, through the Spirit, through the water that cleanses and removes our sin, through the blood that blots out, blots out our transgression, that as we pray that your Spirit will be gifted to each one of us. May the Spirit of truth guide us in all things. May our homes and our churches be filled with people who are guided by the Spirit, because our lives have been transformed through the righteousness of Christ, and that we will be led to walk a walk like Enoch. I pray, dear Father, that the Spirit of truth will give us the Spirit to rebuke all the lies and doubts that Satan has placed in our minds, and that the same Spirit will also seal us for the kingdom. May the Holy Spirit be evident in our speech, our dress, our eating habits, and that we will allow the Spirit to give us also the braveness and the boldness to speak the truth in and out of season. We pray, dear Father, for prayer retreats at the same instance, that your spirit will also abide in all the programs of prayer retreats and that you will bless our current speaker for this week, that you will use him for your divine purposes as your spirit will give him unction to speak on different subjects. I pray, dear Father, that the spirit the holy spirit will be like a fountain of life in our lives and that we will also be encouragers of others just as we gain the blessings from prayer retreat and its ministry we pray O oh heavenly father that you will bless the program that is happening in december 
that you will be with the, the speakers and the families, that you put a watch over them. Currently, Lord, we're asking for prayers for Brother and Elder Robert, who is also in hospital after not being well, and he was last year's speaker. I pray, dear Father, that you will put an angels of protection for over our current speakers that are going to be there in December and our previous speakers, because, Lord, you are using them, dear Father, to sound the loud cry to waken God's people to the season that they are living in. We pray, dear Father, that as you give your people utterance to carry the gospel, that Acts 14 verse 7 will be proclaimed and seen. And there they preach the gospel. We pray, dear Father, that not I but Christ will be honoured, love exalted on prayer retreats in our homes and in your church. And I pray, dear Father, that where we have faltered, wash us, cleanse us in the blood that flows from Calvary. And also give us a prep spirit of praise when we're going through our difficulties. And when all is said and done, when your kingdom comes and your glory will be seen in the earth, may each one of us with our heads bowed, may each one of us who's listening to the recording will be transformed into glory from glory into glory because they have followed the Lamb faithfully. Maybe this is the prayer of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Sister Knox, if you can give our benediction, please. And as we're giving the benediction, can you please remember a sister um Angela Francis, who is um, suffering from cancer, you know, and that God will just continue to bless her and bring healing and, and to the rest of the body of Christ. But I'm just, um, she just sent me a message this morning. I also remember her husband who is having surgery on his cataracts. Um, pray for those who are bereaved. And I don't know if there are any prayer requests from more prayer or from Sister Dorcas. Uh, his sister, what's his name? The name is, is running away from my head now. Oh. So we've got the prayer request from the sister who's who needs to take back a body of, uh, of one of your former church sisters back to Uganda. Was that the one? Yes, that you yes. Oh. Yeah, okay then. So if Sister Knox can do that, and if you can remember the, the husband and wife, Francis family, that God will be with them. Over to you, Sister Knox. Okay, let us pray. General God, our Father is in heaven. We want to thank you for this hour. You have allowed us to turn in prayer as uh, brethren and as a body of Christ and this in this ministry, the prayer retreat, retreat ministry. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for being here with us to teach us, to give us understanding yourself about the issues that concern you. Now, Father, as we continue with the week, we present ourselves and the many other problems that we desire Christ to carry them for us. I bring the uh, people that have been brought here now that I need of prayer, the sister Angela and the husband, they are not well physically, oh Father, we pray for a, a healing power. Not only physically, that you may also heal them spiritually and emotionally. And many others also who are suffering in many ways. And who are in need of breakthroughs from you, oh Father. Other family that has been mentioned as well. We bring all of them before the throne of grace. Father, let your will be done in their lives. And bring relief to them accordingly and re, uh, meet them at the point of their need. And for each and every one of us, we pray, Father, continue to hold us and keep us in the palm of your hand with our families, with our, our loved ones near and far, that you may continue to keep the upward look and looking unto you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. May the name of Jesus be exalted. For we pray in his mighty name. 
according to his promises. But when we pray in his name, everything we bring before the Father, it shall be granted unto us. Increase our faith daily, that we may claim the promises of God as our very own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, everyone, for tarrying in prayer. Again, Sister Knox, may God continue to bless your ministry and your household as you um, allow God to use you to make things plain to his children. I pray that God will be with you again and that you will, um, you know, just all of us to remain faithful to what we know. God, God promises to build on our faith, but we must start with a little faith. Have a blessed day, everyone, and may God keep us in perfect peace as we keep our mind stayed on him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.